Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're going to study the distributive property. First I want to show you these rectangles. It's an area model for the distributive property. And I can think of this in two ways. I can think of it as a one big rectangle, right? Where one side is 2 and then this side is x plus 5. So the area of the rectangle would be therefore 2 times x plus 5 or 2 times the quantity x plus 5 or 2 times the sum of x plus 5. So that's one way to think about it. And the other way to think about it is if I think of it as two rectangles and add their areas. This rectangle and this and add their areas. So the area of this first rectangle would be 2 times x and the area of this rectangle is 2 times 5, right? Or, or 10. It's 10, 10 square units, and then those would be added. So now I have two expressions for the total area, right? And these expressions are equal. If I could put equal sign between them. Now let me show you the same here. First of all, I think of it as one big rectangle, and I find its area, which is now 3 times this side, and this side is x plus y long. And the second way is, I think of it as two rectangles, two separate rectangles, and add their areas. This rectangle has the area of 3 times x. And this rectangle has the area of 3 times y. But in algebra we don't write those multiplication signs here. And then those are added. And these two expressions are equal. Okay. And that is what the distributive property tells us. If I have a number here, and then multiplied by some sum in parentheses. Then it is equal to this. A times the quantity B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C. And most often in math books you see these little arrows that the A multiplied, the A goes to multiply B and the A goes to multiply C too. Okay? So that's AB and then plus AC. Now let's apply this distributive property to this expression here. We are basically simplifying it. Or sometimes it is also called that you get rid of the parentheses. So this is exactly formed like here. I will then therefore go 3 times x and then 3 times 7. 3 times x is of course 3x. Then plus in between these two and then 3 times 7 which is 21. Over here, the same will happen, but I want to actually show it to you here in the area model too. So let me erase this. Here the 3 is this number here, this side length here. Now 2a would be this side length and 1 would be this side length, okay? Now the side lengths are not in proportion, okay? Because obviously 1 should not be this long is if 3 is this long, but ignore that. And if we are simplifying this, then the first rectangle here has the area of 3 times 2a, right? We would have 3 times 2a. Now I have to put the multiplication symbol here between 3 and 2, so I won't get 32. And then the area of this is 3 times 1. And those are added. Okay? And I'll copy it here too. See, 3 times 2a and then 3 times 1, and they are added. This one here, 3 times 2a, is actually 3 times 2 times a. Okay? 3 times 2 times a. And in this multiplication, you can multiply 3 times 2 and get 6. So we can simplify it a little bit. This actually becomes 6a, and then this becomes 3. Over here, I do the same 2 times this term and 2 times that term, so I get 2 times 3x, and then add 2 times 2y. Now here I can simplify a little bit more, make it simpler looking, because I can multiply here 2 times 3 in my head, and here 2 times 2 in my head. So then I get 6x here, and 4y there. Now let's practice that a little bit more and pause the video now and try to simplify these on your own or get rid of the parentheses using the distributive property. 
Okay, here I will multiply 8 times x and 8 times y. So this is simply 8x plus 8y. This one here, 10 times 7 first. 10 times 7 is 70. Okay, and then 10 times that. What's 10 times 2 times b? That would be 20b. Over here, looks more complicated, but it isn't really. 4 times 3x and then 4 times 5y. 4 times 3x and 4 times 5y. Now I multiply 4 times 3, that's 12. So this first one is 12x and this one is 20y. Over here, x is here outside the parentheses. But the principle works the same way, because x is some number, okay? I go x times 6, x times 7y. So I get x times 6, and then x times 7y. That is the right answer. However, it is customary in mathematics that we always write the number before the letter. This coefficient is written before the variable, and here also the 7 would be written in front of the x. These are multiplications. x times 6 is the same as 6 times x in multiplication. You can multiply in any order. Okay? So this is the same as 6x. And then over here, the 7 will be put in front. So we have 7 times x times y. Now here, draw an area model for this expression and then simplify. Okay, we're gonna use this idea of rectangles. You see it is similar, isn't it? pretty close to this one already. This 3 that is outside the parentheses will be our side length for this, the side that is the same in these. But this time we're going to have three different rectangles. 3 and then, um, well, a long rectangle. And this side here is x plus y plus 5, okay? So let's say that x is this long, y is that long, and that this one. Here is my area model. I hope you understand how it matches this. No, I'm sorry, 5. 5 here, not 1. Simplify means we will now get rid of the parentheses. Let me write it here. The same principle applies, the distributive property. 3 times x, and then 3 times y, and then lastly, 3 times 5. So we will get 3x plus 3y plus 15. And you see these are the areas of the three separate rectangles here. This rectangle here, its area is 3x. And then this area is 3y and this area is 15.